Thank you. Good afternoon. So we all know how bad this feels, don't we? Having a mosquito biting through our skin and taking our blood. We've all been there many times before. And that's why we don't like mosquitoes very much, because they do this to us. And that's also why I study them, because by doing this, then they transmit diseases that kill people. And the disease I study is called malaria. And many of you in this audience will know a lot about malaria. But what you might not know is that malaria has killed 10 million people in the last 12 years, since the beginning of this century. So 10 million people, that's a lot of people. It's like the population of New York City being wiped out in just a short time. But these people are not dying in New York City. They're not dying in Los Angeles or London, but they're dying in Africa. And this map shows the world according to the number of malaria deaths in each country. And you don't see the US in this map or Europe. You see a little bit of South America. You see a bit more of Southeast Asia and India. But you see a lot of Africa. And that's because 90% um, of malaria deaths happen in Africa. And mainly occur uh, in children under the age of five, the most vulnerable uh, population. So that's why I study the African mosquitoes, because they are the most deadly insects that we have in the world. And how do mosquitoes transmit malaria? When a female mosquito bites a person that is infected with the malaria parasite, then after a few days, so she takes the blood and the parasite, and the next time she can bite, uh, she will inject the parasite into the next person, making them infected with malaria. So if we stop the mosquito, we stop malaria. But how can we stop the mosquito? And there are already a few tools that we have that are very good. We have insecticides to kill them. We have mosquito nets to protect people. But that's it. So we have two tools to target a mosquito that kills almost a million people every year. So that got me thinking, there must be other ways we can do this. And then I had like this revelation. What about sex? What about if we targeted mosquito sex as a way to stop malaria? And that's what we do in the lab. We study sex and fertility in these mosquitoes because if we can stop them from reproducing, then we can stop malaria transmission. And here you see a mosquito couple having sex. It looks pretty hot, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so it might not look a very passionate affair to you, like the male and the female are not even looking at each other. However, it's actually a very effective process. In fact, sex is over in 20 seconds. Try and beat that. <laughs> and during these 20 seconds, the female gets everything she needs from the male. She gets sperm, she gets seminal secretions. And then that's it for her. She doesn't want to have sex anymore. So she switches off for the rest of her life, which means that females have sex a single time. And so that's quite remarkable that something so important for the survival of a species happens only once. But that's great for us, because then if we can target this step, then we can make mosquitoes sterile so that there'll be fewer mosquitoes out there that can transmit the disease. And this is not a new concept. Other people before us have had the same idea. However, they didn't have the same molecular and genetic tools that we have now. And so in the lab, we use these molecular and genetic tools to target male and female fertility, a sort of like mosquito birth control strategy, if you wish. And so we can make females uh, sterile by, for instance, preventing them from developing eggs or from laying them. Or we can make males sterile by preventing them from forming viable and fertile sperm. And this is what we did last year with some of our collaborators. We took male that were strong and fertile and had a sperm looking like this, so beautiful sperm that we make fluorescent so that we can visualize it. And then we manipulated these males so that they would not be able to have sperm anymore, to make sperm anymore. And so that their testes would look like this, like an empty, dark, desolate space. <laughs> and these males, they can still have, they're still happy to have sex. No surprises there. But perhaps, <laughs> more surprisingly, perhaps, is that the females are still happy to have sex with these males. And after sex, they again switch off, and they don't have sex anymore. So which means that because they did not receive sperm, they will be sterilized for the rest of their lives. So we can do all these nice things in the lab to induce sterility in these mosquitoes. But however, for us now, the next big challenge is how can we push these tools out of the lab and make them available to the people that need, mo that need them most? And thank you. <laughs>